So here is an efficiency problem where the work in and work out are not just given to you. You need to calculate them. And so sometimes it helps to draw a picture of this. So we have a crate that we are lifting with some sort of pulley system. And we're not really getting into pulleys too much right here. Just know that they can be used to make it easier to lift something. This is usually multiple pulleys in this situation. But basically, we are, we are exerting a force of 300 newtons over a distance of four meters in order to lift a 50 kilogram crate uh, a distance of two meters. So yeah, this pulley system is not drawn correctly to do this. This will not do it, but without getting into that, this is what's going to be happening. So as before, our efficiency formula is um, that it's work out over work in. So now we just got to figure out what's our work in, what's our work out. So our work in is the force that we exert over the distance we exert it. So we exert a force of 300 newtons over 4 meters. So 1,200 joules is our work in. The work out is the force that is exerted times the distance, you know, the effective distance it acts. Now, 50 kilograms is the mass of this, but remember that translates to a 500 newton weight. So in order to lift this, uh, 500 newtons must be pulling up on the crate to lift it, and it is lifted a distance of two, two meters. So the work out is 500 newtons times two meters, or 1,000 joules. So basically, uh, our work out is 1,000 joules, and our work in is 1,200. And these should seem reasonable because, remember, you're always going to have a lower work in out than you put in. That's just sort of the nature of the game. So um, we are putting 1,200 joules in, and we're getting 1,000 out. So again, in your head, you should have an idea what percentage this is. Not exactly, but it's clearly over 50%. It's not 100%. Uh, you know, it's got to be somewhere in between there. So make sure you're getting that as a final answer. But anyway, the efficiency then is going to be 1,000 over 1,200, and that will give us the decimal answer. And the decimal answer ends up being uh, 0.833 which, if we convert to a percentage, is 83.3%, which, hopefully in your head, before you actually even did this, this seems reasonable. 1,000 out of 1,200, it's, it's a pretty high percentage, but it's not all the way to 100, and, and that seems like a reasonable answer. It's always a good way to check that. So that is the efficiency of this pulley system, which, again, this is not drawn correctly, so do not read into that, and um, we'll talk about pulleys some other time, but this is not it. So here's another efficiency problem, same idea, given different information. Here we are given the efficiency. Um, we are told we're exerting a force over this distance, So, and we're trying to figure out uh, how much the object gets lifted. So figure out what we're exerting, that's going to give us the work in, right? The work in is our force times the distance that we exert it. So 180 times 5, um, that's going to give us 900 joules as our work in. We know the efficiency it was given to us is 0.65, so then we got to go from there. Now, if you know the efficiency and you know the work in, then that's enough information to figure out the work out. So before we even look at the rest of the problem, we can actually calculate our work out because you remember the efficiency is the work out over the work in. So 0.65 equals the work out over 900. And so if we cross multiply, work out then times 1 is work out. 900 times 0.65 is 585. So we get 585 joules out. And again, that should seem reasonable. If it were 50% efficient, we'd get half of 900, which is 450. But it's 65% efficient, so we get a little more than 450. That's our work out. But what's this trying to actually figure out? We are lifting some unknown mass, a distance of 1.25 meters. And we want to know, what is that mass? So we know that this 585 joules done on this object in lifting at 1.25 meters. So we know the work and we know the distance, so we can figure out the force. So 585 equals the force, which is unknown, times the distance, 1.25. Solving for the force, we get that must be a force of 468 newtons are lifting this box. And we might think we're done, we're really close, but we always gotta look. We're looking for the mass, 
And mass is not measured in newtons, it's measured in kilograms. So if it takes this force to lift the crate, uh, to start moving it upward, what is its mass? And this goes back to converting from weight to mass and vice versa. Remember, weight, force of the weight is mass times g. So in order to find mass, you're just dividing each side by g or by 10. So the mass is 46.8 kilograms. And that's our final answer. Now, when any time you do a problem where you're working backwards a lot, it never hurts to just take those numbers and, and plug it in and, and redo the problem from the beginning. So we say, okay, if this has a mass of 46.8 kilograms, what is its weight? What is the workout? You know, just double check and make sure you're getting these answers, um, and that will you know make sure you get it. So, you know, 468 newtons times 1.25 meters gets you a workout of 585, and that correctly works with the 65% um, without going through too many of that. So this was a tough problem. There's a lot of steps to it. Um, it's really about keeping track of your variables and your formulas and just systematically solving for everything you can possibly solve for, even if you're not quite sure how you're going to do the problem yet. Um, that's sort of the system. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.